and we are live what is going on everybody happy new year welcome to 2022 it's your boy blackwing 2040 and i am here with my man tex how are you doing my friend i am doing great i cannot wait to relive this childhood today I just can't. yeah this is gonna be great so guys welcome to 2022 happy new year to you all this is the start of a new marathon. I feel like I just be, I just, I don't know why I just feel the urge to just record these or just do these marathons on my channel for some reason. And just like, I don't know, relive epic moments and just like share the epic moments on YouTube and everything. But it's, it's fun because like 2020, I did Power Rangers. Last year I did uh, the Disney movies. I didn't finish that one because that was that project. <laughs> I, I feel that that's Disney. Yeah, yeah that Jesus. that project was a bit much. I had to put that project on like hold because I only got I only got up to like once I got to the Bronze Age of Disney movies, I just feel like okay, I don't think I could I could do this project anymore. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was heavy. It was it was a very heavy project. Heck, I didn't even even start the Pixar movies yet. But who knows? I'll probably get back to that project somewhere down the road. But this year, this marathon. <laughs> me and Tex are going to be going through the entire DC animated universe from Batman, the animated series to all the way to justice league unlimited. That's right. We're going through BTAS Superman, the animated series, Batman beyond the highly lesser known underrated show, the Zeta project static shock justice league and justice league unlimited. And if you're wondering about the movies that are in between, we will be covering those movies as well. Of course, Mass of the Phantasm is going to have its own commentary. Uh, Sub Zero, Mystery of the Batwoman, and, Bat and Return of the Joker. They're going to have their own specific commentaries. So, basically, how this marathon is going to work, we're only going to be doing iconic slash favorite episodes. Basically, it's it's you know it's less work for for us to you know commentate every single episode of the anime series because Lord, that's a lot of episodes to commentate. But we're just going to be doing the more so the iconic ones and a few of our favorites. So, of course, first series is up is Batman Animated Series. And we're doing the episode that started all on Leather Wings. Now, before we continue, uh, just, you know, just want to say a little, you know, rest in peace to Sidney Portier, who passed away this morning. Uh, first black man to win an Academy Award and paid the way for a lot of black actors. So, Thank you for all your hard work and your craft and everything that you did for this industry and for all of us people of color, Mr. Sidney Portier. Rest in peace. You are dearly missed. Rest in power. Thank you for everything that you've done. Yes. Anywho, let's get on with the show. So, Tex, Batman the Anime Series, you ready to go through this this uh, this roller coaster? I am, and I am happy to say that it seems we are starting on an episode revolving around who I feel is one of the more underrated bad villains. Yes, of all villains to start with, we start with Man Bats. Because usually you think in a for a first episode for a Batman show, you would think it would probably be like someone more iconic like Joker or Penguin or Riddler or Catwoman, but instead they chose Man Bat. So it's an interesting choice. It's a very interesting choice. So yes. without further ado, we did a lot of talking for a lot of three minutes. So let's get this show on the road and we begin. This has got to be probably one of the best. I'm sorry, Warner Brothers. They don't do ever. it like that no more. That little <laughs> transition from their logo to the blimp. It's nope, nope, um, no, they don't. But it's just, it's just great. Like, and I was looking up the animation and uh, the animation studios that that did this. They are they've really done some great work. And to see the show in like HD quality, yeah, it's it's eye opening because um. I forgot the name of the episode, but I'm sure you'll remember. I'm not sure if it's on the list for the future, but the first Batman animated series I saw, episode I saw was the episode with Penguin chasing down Batman, and he Batman was in the two kids' uh, basement. Oh, was Batman, Batman in my Batman. basement, I believe. That, <laughs> that was, was the first good, one, and this opening stuck with me since that day because I believe it came with that, and it came with like the Two Face Two part, and this little lightning, it just stuck with me ever since. It's beautiful. beautiful. It's just beautiful. Also, yeah, these card arts, like... Oh, yeah, the they, title cards were just... It has man. so much class to it, you know? I don't think they do them like that anymore. 
no cartoons don't do it like it anymore it's it's they just saw the name that's just so much class to it look at yeah. these clouds like the art and the background and the just the color for the show it's just they really stuck on the got it right on the nose oh this scene because um remember this scene was actually homaged in um epilogue yes yeah an yes. epilogue and I, I never caught that till years later oh man it's crazy how Kevin Conroy voiced one of the one of those uh those pilots. And I would only notice it since you said it. <laughs> or, or like the second view. Like someone would have to tell me because like, it's obvious when you look for it. Yeah. But you're like, oh, he's just some random guy. I'm sure they just got like some dude in the back to do it. No, it's Kevin Conroy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Kevin Conroy had a lot of range back then. He does. I think he's actually pretty underrated. A lot of people don't know him as Batman. Yeah, but he yeah, has a pretty good range, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's what he is known for. Pretty, That's pretty much what he's majorly known for. Yeah. Um, you know, my yeah. favorite role personally is him playing uh, Merman in Masters of the Universe Revelations, you know? I mean, and, you know, he always wanted to play Aquaman, I'm sure. That would have to be his lifelong dream. <laughs> I'm not really an artist kind of guy, but just like the shadow work. It's like the red tint. These are things you don't notice as a kid. That's like just makes the whole thing come alive more. Yeah. It's just like you don't notice these things when you're younger, but as you're older, you're just like, wow. Yeah, because they're really like into the shadows. Like every episode has like something for everyone. A mis a, Well, definitely a mystery kind of feel to it. And, you know... You know, some more on the comedic end, some more have like a darker, darker tone, but yeah. I think one thing that DCA you did very well is ironically, especially for Batman, they really do have a good way of animating the fear on the human's face. Mm -hmm. Like he looked, he looked terrified. Yo, this is yo, the yeah, fact I'm that sorry. man. The yeah, fact I, that Man Bat threw this guy out the window. I can promise you, if this show was made today, like that new Batman show that's coming out. Oh yes, I promise you, that man would be dead. There are so many deaths in this show that would have been deaths if I feel like the network would have let it be a death. That would have been one of them. <laughs> he would be dead. And this was my first um, look at Bullock. I think Harvey Bullock is probably one of my favorite, like non Bad Family Gotham characters. Like the supporting characters, yeah. I just he's just something about him that makes me, especially this version. He's a good cop. He just is like, yeah, I don't like just, Batman. <laughs> he's <know>? like, <laughs> he's like the Jameson for Batman. I mean, he minus the whole he's a menace and everything. He does yeah. like he has a respect for you know the heroes and everything, but he just can't. I guess he just can't stand his methods. I think it's also because Batman's kind of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, of course. The first time we see Harvey. See, this is the setup you don't get in, like, in a lot of shows nowadays. They were like, really setting Harvey up right from the get-go. They it set this man really... up. Like, I don't know how many episodes we are from his two-parter, but this is like, at least like four episodes in advance. Yep. And here we are, the man himself. I love how this is his first appearance. He's just casually reading the newspaper. <laughs> he's just casually reading the newspaper. It's, a, it's nothing dramatic. It's just no one. He's Batman. He's just he's smiling. Like reading a newspaper in the Bat Cave, not out prowling the night and everything. It's just it, yeah, you so never yeah. would expect like that to be your first opening shot of Batman. You would expect them to be like out uh, out on the job and everything. But I'm this pretty is sure every good... other animated series, maybe not Brave and the Bold, obviously, but like the Batman or Beware the Batman. I'm pretty sure they both followed that whole. You know, he's stalking someone. But no, this one is like, yeah, he's Batman. He's been Batman for a few years. He's casual about it. Yep. He already has the two seats. I mean, at this point, we already know Robin exists, you know? He's just mm -hmm. in college or whatever. That shot right there with the Batmobile and you that see the, great. And the sparks on the wheels and everything, yeah. that was so, so well done. Maybe Batman is the reason I'm in anime because it just gives me such like crisp vibes. So look at that Batmobile. Not even my favorite Batmobile, but look at it. I never really liked this one because just of how nah, long, just how long the front is. Yeah, I mean, like I don't like the Batmobile itself, but the shots with it, it's just something. I uh, look at that blue tint on the cape. Yeah, it has great shots. It's just I just don't like. Oh that no, it's, it's an ugly vehicle. Though. I stand by that. <laughs> I stand by that. 
<laughs> to all our Batmobile uh, lovers, just know there, you know, there are other good Batmobiles out there. Trust me, yeah, there's a whole is, lot. That one is just very long. Yo, this, <laughs> this dude is trying to get something. <laughs> Could you just you just saw Batman and it's like, yeah. <laughs> Also got a love because the Batman animated series. This is back when Batman was a lot less like a gadgeteer. He did very like simple gadgets, you know. Yeah, smoke this was bombs, also, com- this was also coming off. Uh, this was also coming off the stint of a uh, nineteen eighty nine with Michael Keaton. So yeah, yeah, they really like they really bounced back with you know the nineteen eighty nine movie. Any problems with that movie? I still think that movie is. What has helped has helped Batman just thrive? Oh, oh yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. Cause... Like I feel like that movie might have been the movie that finally defined the look of Gotham. And I think you have to define what Gotham looks like to get the mm-hmm. most out of it. This mm-hmm. gothic city. Mm-hmm. What is that vehicle? That that is a SWAT truck. <laughs> that is a SWAT... Oh yeah, <laughs> like SWAT truck that, like... that has like two. <laughs> Like two levels to it. This is giving me Batman Year One vibes with the SWAT <laughs> like coming. Oh yes, first. yeah, yeah. Well, of course, with uh, Co- Commissioner Gordon still, you know, you no, know, he's already okay with Batman as an ally anyway. He has no problem. Yeah. This is just you know Bullock and the mayor to an extent, and uh, Harvey to an extent. Yeah. Great detective it. work in the first time. Um, <laughs> like, I, this is just good detective work. Mm-hmm. Detective Vision, eat your heart out. <laughs> Pre Arkham uh, days. Yes. Wow. Just, just wow. I want, I'm going to show people this when they say that Batman animated series Batman wasn't a good enough detective at times that was literally his first instinct i'm just like (laughs) yeah i don't get he's not over the top like he's not like oh yeah i can tell where you were standing by the scent of your cologne but you know (laughs) he he, he does actual (laughs) detective work you know of course commissioner gordon is pissed off I forgot how much of a hard on Bullock has for Batman, like how much he just comes from. Because this reminds me, like, um, into into Phantasm, wasn't he leading the charge on that too? I forgot. Cause here's the thing: I only seen Master of the Phantasm once, just once. <laughs> and... I saw it for the first time like three years ago, and I think, yeah, I, I see what people talk about. Like, it's, it's a, a great movie. movie. It's a really great movie. I can't. I can see why people say it's one of the best, but. I when we when we get to it when we watch it I'm I could I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have a different uh different you know feel towards it next time mm. because it's just you know the scene where you know where Bruce becomes Batman for the first time that's just the best that's like the best scene in the movie yeah. <laughs> Alfred <laughs> my word my God <laughs> oh yeah my God that's why they didn't have to be locked down by TV censors they can do whatever they want they could show blood. The 90s got away with so much. Nowadays, it's just... Look at the gotta... fear in that man's eyes. <laughs> it's like, please don't kill me. <laughs> the fact that these guys start uh, tear gas from... Oh, shucks. Oh, yeah. See... Got them... Uh... Uh, Gotham yeah, police are not that smart. Th- that scene framed them as being pure antagonists in every way of the word, and uh, maybe that's the point. I know it's really just Jim and a few other like select few, but Jesus, yeah, Jim and Montoya are like the only good cops, but every other co- and Bullock to an extent, but every other cop in Gotham, look at that, he helped him stand up. He's like, <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> like, hey, you know, like, I don't, and he's just like, sh- see, he's like, shook if I'd, I'd be pretty thankful, like, yeah. He could have just dropped him. <laughs> and oh, well, they dropped him. Huh? <laughs> and he faints. And our first shot of Bruce Wayne. 
I really do love this design for Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You know, I understand. Okay. You know when the new Batman adventure started and they changed the uh, the animation and everything? Mm, yeah. I love that animation a lot more than the original, to be honest. No, I feel you. I even, I even stand by most of the designs are more improved. I, I do think some designs fell for it, but it's no hate on this show. But I do feel like the new Batman, as far as the aesthetic and overall design choices, they did improve a lot. Mm-hmm. Which is bound to happen. You know, when you make something, it's never going to be, like, perfect the first go-around. And plus, it didn't change the tone of the show, either. Oh, exactly. I forget. Is this Kirk or no? No, I don't think think that's, that's not Kirk. Okay, no, that's Kirk's um, girlfriend slash wife or whatever. That's right. So, yeah. That's not her yet. That yeah, that's uh Fran- Francine. Yeah. Oh, guys, so weird sinker like this because I was recently there. Reading. There he there's, goes. There's Kirk. I don't know why he looks like he'd be a good Two Face design too. <laughs> like, <laughs> he looks like he'd be Harvey. It's funny though how you would think the suspect would be that other dude and not Kirk because he just comes off as you know suave and gentleman like and everything. You wouldn't yeah. suspect him to be man bad. Yeah, nowadays I feel like it'd be kind of obvious. It's kind of throw you around, but back then, I'm, I'm back then. I'm pretty sure if you saw this for the first time, you would not think it's this guy. You would think he's actually just an ally or just a normal guy helping. Yeah, I mean, probably not even a, maybe a suspect, but not the real culprit. Yeah, until you get until you get to like the to the ending. And it's so weird because I was um recently reading. Well, it's like a few months ago. I read um. I forgot who wrote it, but it was the most recent Man Bad book. That's like a prequel before he joins Justice League Dark. And that book really puts a lot of shine on Man Bad. They actually kind of, I think, make him a lot like the Lizard. Ah. And um, his relationship with, you know, Francine is like put on like in like a light. Like he loves her, but, you know, he's still addicted to the whole being Man Bad thing. So that's pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah, not as not as bad as the lizard. You know, they didn't like. Oh yeah, let me eat my kid or something. I don't. Bro, <laughs> I don't. Bro, <laughs> I, yeah, the lizard used to be probably like my fourth favorite villain. I don't know why they did him like that, but you know, this is Batman's time. <laughs> Look how, how frankly he changes his how like how he quickly sw- changes the voice. He switches from his Batman voice to his Bruce Wayne voice. He's it's so casually. Wayne. Brilliant. He just has to straight back. And back to the Batman voice. <laughs> this is so brilliant. Which I think it's funny because he's just with Alfred. He doesn't have to have the Batman voice. He just chooses to put it on. Yep. God, this is a 90s computer personified. You can I cannot tell what that's supposed to be. Either that or like probably because or the 80s. Because when you look at the oh, back, yeah. you can see that there's no there's only like one screen with so many buttons and so many controls. It's, and it's like like he can't possibly reach them all, but you don't care because it's cool. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's <laughs> yeah. burning the evidence. I wonder who's doing that. Okay, I I mean, the subtitles did kind of spoil that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I guess... Well, I don't know which. I, yeah, Lizard came first, but I feel like yeah, Lizard probably w- was a insp- was like a inspiration for a man bat in a way. Yeah, because um, I, I I didn't read those comics, but from my understanding, like in the '90s and '80s, even back then, man bat still did have like anti-hero vibes. Like he wasn't straight up a villain all the time. He had his own solo run where he was actually a good guy. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I, don't, I think the only animated series to do anything with like a heroic man bat though might have been Beware the Batman. I think. Yes. Yeah, it was Beware the Batman. Yeah. Which you know is always welcome. 
Yeah, I didn't really like the show that much. That show should have just been called Batman and the Outsiders. I have no real big thoughts on the show because even as a kid, I was I was okay with. It. I was like, eh, it looks nice, you know. It's just I think the the art direction in that show didn't work. I mean, it worked for Green Lantern, but not for the Batman show. It did. Yeah, I think. I mean, Batman and his Bruce Wayne persona looked very weird in that show. Like they were tall, kind of lanky. I don't know. First time I didn't like the long ears. Yes. And the what's the word I'm looking for? The weapon usage with Alfred and everything. I know a lot of people had a problem with that. Yeah. That was a great shot. Uh, this is a great transformation. It's, wow. You just see how his hair just completely disappears. Yeah, that's uh God. I've always been a fan of like stuff like that where like you get to see the real time transformation. This is like a man to like a beast. Yeah, it's like a great it's a great transition. And the screeching sound effects for him is just wow. <laughs> yeah. God, that's a big Batman. That's a buff bat. <laughs> a Batman in his in his prime. I wonder if somebody saw this and was like, I'm a, I'm a furry now, you know, after looking at man bat. Uh oh. Wife uh, sees you. I always love this trope. Like, yeah, they're kind of they're kind of crazy <laughs> until they see they love the one and they're like, oh man. I was like, great. She sees me as a monster. And it's crazy how there's another ep- like a sequel to this episode where she gets turned into a bat. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. Look at that shot. Oh, man. I don't know. I've, I've seen this. I don't know if this is just an iconic thing, but anytime Man Bat, I see him somewhere in like a series, that shot of them just like Batman dropping on his leg and them flying into the night is just always there. Because I know they did it in the Batman too from 2004. Oh, yes. Yes, they did. Oh, that's got to hurt. <laughs> that's got to hurt. <laughs> that face <laughs> face plant. <laughs> I'm amazed how they did not crash, like literally, like you know, destroy the blimp at all during that whole, that whole battle. Yeah. Like for some reason, I feel like Man Bat would just like just fly through the blimp and then just those two pilots were just done for. <laughs> They'd probably have to. Oh no, you gotta write it in. Uh, they were saved. Or sure, their bodies are okay or something. Good old Bullock, Gordon. Bullock and Gordon's views are just, even though they have like opposing views and everything, <laughs> it, <laughs> just, it just jumps into the helicopter. Even though they have opposing views, they're just both trying to be good cops. Yeah, I don't think they even actively dislike each other. They just have very different views, especially regarding Batman. Yep. Like this thing. I mean, this looks beautiful. The animation like... is just so brilliant. It's just. When you have like a still background like this, and then when you have the moment with Batman going through the the construction beams and everything, those are great shots. Yeah, like for a '90s show, that that's that's really they're really good. Like especially like over here, like over there in you know like Japan or the East, like animation was kind of already kind of moving to that state of like because you know and in Japan, anime is a lot more like action oriented. Over mm-hmm. here, like I think Batman animated series is one of the first times we had like such a good looking show that was like an action adventure. Yep. Cause for one, like I love the X-Men animated series, but you can tell their budget was nowhere near what the Batman's budget was. Nah, I mean though both of those shows were neck and neck back in the nineties. They were no, the- they both great shows, but it's like, yeah, I went back to go look at some X-Men. Look at that. I, I didn't even know they were able to show blood back then. You like they, they had, had to recycle really it out. Like they had so many sent. They had so many uncensored moments here in the show back then. They just let it happen, and they had a lot of free reigns to do it. Nowadays, you you know you show blood in cartoons. Like no, turn, yeah. shut it down. Like I don't need my show to be like invincible. I don't need to see a, a dude's head gets popped. Well, off, yeah, like, no, no. Yeah, I mean, but like a little blood, I think it makes it feel more real. You know. 
it just makes you know it gives you those oh my god moments like they just did that yeah like hey you could tell he's in pain or at least was hurt by that took a heavy a heavy blow And he's back to normal. I feel this is another part of Batman's like that's very inconsistent with like modern day depictions of I, I hope the upcoming movie gets it right. But Batman is such a compassionate fellow, you know? Yep. And he has a heart. Like yeah, he's not he's not heartless. Like he actually cares about other people and their well being. It's not like it's not like the Batman we're so used to now in the comics who doesn't really care about other people. I mean, he cares, but to an extent. He just, yeah, it, it really depends on the writer. Like, yeah, it, it just depends. Some writers, writer. he's just, I'll plus my criminal. That's the one <laughs> thing I liked about Tom King's run at the start. It was like, oh no, he was actively helping Clayface. I really enjoyed that. Yes, yes, yes. But, but yeah, that was, that was good. Like, and we're, that's, we're, that's just the beginning. We got to, it's still got a great hook. Yeah, yeah, we still got ways to go. We got. I'm looking forward to covering Heart of Ice because I just no, because that episode is just God. I'm sorry, I got distracted by that horrible <laughs> scarecrow design. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I might have been the biggest Mister Freeze fan, but I don't think there's any discussion. His he has one of the best episodes, if not the best episode in season one. Mm-hmm. And his episode is personally one of my favorite Batman Beyond episodes. When it's like his at the end of his story, I just this, this version of the character is just so great. It, I feel like all of his focus episodes are like my favorite. Like regardless, he has the I, most consistency of all the, like the main rogues, I believe. Yeah, and even though they find, I know with Sub Zero had a happy ending, and then the episode uh, Code Comfort and New Batman Adventures kind of you know took that away. It's still yeah. made for good story for you know tragic storytelling. Yeah, because that's what Mister Freeze is. He's a tragic. He's a tragic villain. He's a sympathetic kind of character, like yeah. you know, like Magneto. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of episodes coming down the pipeline. And before we go, because uh, a text you mentioned about the upcoming uh Batman the Cape Crusader show, turns out the first season is going to be ten episodes long, and it's going to be written by Ed Brubaker, who, for mm. all you comic book uh, readers, you know, he wrote. Uh, he has pretty much well known as one of the best, the best Captain America runs ever. And he I had can... the um Winter Soldier run, correct? Yes, he's the one that he's oh, the okay. one that gave us. He's the one that gave us the Winter Soldier. They can have chosen the... for this now. I'm actually ten episode run. I'm guessing with like how modern shows do, maybe like at least. 40 minutes per episode, maybe. Yeah, 45 to me to maybe an hour. 45 to maybe an hour episodes long. That's pretty excited. Um, like I've liked a lot of the Batman shows since. Like I love Brave and the Bold, but I love Brave and the Bold because it's campy. I love the Batman, but it's like I grew up with it. You but know, that show, I don't know. It might it might be like the closest thing to like a true spiritual successor to this series, mm-hmm. as far as like the atmosphere it's trying to present. From what I've seen of like the one poster they showed off, maybe once we get the trailer, we'll know more. Yeah. I mean, even with Brave and the Bold, because I've been watching that show since last year, because I tried to actually, like, go through it, because I understand what the show is going for, having, you know, Batman team up with lesser-known heroes and bring in the popular ones later on, because I just... I feel like also Jaime Reyes, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it introduced me to Jaime, Plastic Man, Booster Gold, like, it introduced me to a whole list of heroes. Like, the only character in that show when it first premiered that i knew was aquaman <laughs> that's the only that's the yeah, only character. aquaman and was green arrow was in season one right yeah green arrow was in season one but i at the time i didn't recognize him because he didn't have oh uh, yeah the, the goatee, the goatee. <laughs> <laughs> He's like generic robin hood <laughs> yeah <laughs> he didn't have the the goatee he just had just the fresh clean face and everything but one Don't thing i just face. yeah the one thing about brave and the bold i don't re- i didn't really like is just you know the popular heroes didn't come until like late, late, the close to when the show was like you know ending. No, like yeah, Superman. I definitely feel that because not even just Superman and Wonder Woman. I remember like Hal Jordan's Cinder episode. I don't think John Stewart appeared in it. Nope. nope. So it was like they didn't have they appeared to the end. Um, 
they had their own uh, little flash rebirth story. I remember that because that was a great yeah, was, like Barry like, yeah, Barry was in the show, but he came in like the middle of season two, I believe. But I mean, it was still cool to see Barry, but I just feel like you know the more popular characters should have shown up a little bit sooner instead of just bringing in like close to when the show was on its last legs. Because like bringing in Wonder Woman and Superman in like the final season was so like uh that's a little too late to be bringing in like you know <laughs> the tr- the DC Trinity at this point. Yeah, but eh, the show is still good. Like it it's still has some. You. It still has some really good, op- really, really good episodes. I can't deny. Like the episode that surprised me the most was the Doom Patrol episode. Oh, that episode again! Like when I tell you, my mouth actually dropped. Like I was one of those people who will look up episode and look up theories. Like after I watched it, I was like, "Oh, are they actually dead?" Because that was to me. I didn't expect that from that show. Because that show. Not only did it kill off the Doom Patrol, it also remember it killed off Wildebeest. Yes, Buana Beast. It killed oh, off. Oh yeah, Buonabies. my bad. I would have been. Yeah, Buana Beast. <laughs> I was like, I was so surprised by it because I was like, especially because it was Batman Brave and Abode. It was more like episodic. So it when ch- they actually had like I don't know, it was it was very surprising to me, but not like a bad way. I genuinely did enjoy those parts. Cause it was yeah. like, yeah, serious things can still happen. Exactly, no matter how campy a show can be. But, uh, yep. So that was our commentary for the very first episode, the start of the DC Animated Universe on Leather Wings. We got a lot to look forward to coming down the pipeline. The next uh, <clears throat> the next episode that we're going to be doing with commentary is going to be uh, Nothing to Fear. That's a scarecrow focus episode. So, <laughs> 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 of course, you know, Scarecrow went through like, many many design choices i want to hear no one if you hate the new batman the animated series the one thing you can't deny it, it, it that gave is us, the best scarecrow yeah, that design is, ever i'm surprised i got away with it with the whole hangman look um but yeah oh, i can't yeah, wait to talk about that the whole noose around the neck and everything yeah genuinely surprised i got away with that like hey. censors back then was so wishy-washy with what they let these people get away with man <laughs> exactly but uh yeah so before we go texas there uh where can everybody find you okay so you can find me at detective on twitter or the detective on youtube and of course you guys can find me on twitter instagram facebook and twitch at blackwing 2040 of course don't remember don't forget to uh like comment share and subscribe and click that bell to be notified here on the channel and thank you guys so much for listening and stay tuned for other commentaries because this we're this is just the beginning. We just I mean, I try not to like jump too like too far ahead because because we're currently in the Batman's uh, focus right now because I'm just like I'm waiting till we get to like Batman Beyond and Justice League because that was Justice League was the hit superhero show for me back in the day. So I can't wait to get the before. Same with me. Yeah, we got to get through Batman the Animated Series first. But I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Stay tuned for the next commentary uh, video. And, of course, any other content-related stuff I have coming up. Because, trust me, I got a lot of stuff planned for this year. So, as always, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. As always, bla- I wow, I can't believe I forgot my own outro. <laughs> How do I forget my own outro? My gosh. <laughs> I am vengeance. I am darkness. I am Blackwing. <laughs> Stay golden, guys. See you later. <laughs>